This video is for my beautiful people who anguish and toil and spend way too much precious time, energy, and head trash making decisions in their life. Because if that's you, I want you to know you're not alone. I'm making this video for me too because it's top of mind right now. And I gotta be honest with you, at the age of almost 54, you would think that I would have this figured out, right? You would think that I would know how to make decisions for my life and be at peace with them. But I'm here to tell you that is absolutely not the case. I still struggle making decisions in my life, whether it's what to have for dinner or whether or not we should sell our house in Austin and move back to California or Toronto or somewhere else. Like big and small, I spend so much time spinning in decisions. And I do this to the point where I put myself in a state of mental exhaustion. I know you know what I'm talking about, right? You do the pros and cons list and you talk to other people and you get everybody else's advice and you just can't make choices because you're terrified of making the wrong choice. And the reason you're terrified of making the wrong choice is that you lack self-trust. You don't trust yourself to start things and follow through with them. You don't trust your better judgment. You don't trust your impulsivity. You don't trust yourself because you feel like you've got a track record of bad decisions that you've made in your life and bad consequences. And everybody else likes to remind you about the bad decisions you've made in your life. And now in adulthood, if you're anything like me, you find yourself in the state of paralysis every time you're faced with making a choice because it just feels so insurmountable. And you don't think that you'll have the capacity to forgive yourself if you make yet another bad decision. If what I'm saying to you resonates, then stick around because we're going to unpack this. And if this is the first time we're meeting each other, welcome. My name is Karen McGill. I am an ADHD coach and creator, and I'm here for the busy, ambitious brains who want to do great things, but they're terrified of making decisions. But that's going to end right now. Now, the one thing I'm not going to do is tell you that I have the perfect answer on how you can make decisions going forward and knock it out of the park every time. That's just not gonna happen. But what I wanna do in this video is help you get a little bit more comfortable around making decisions because in reality, you and I both know making decisions in life is never black or white, right or wrong, bad or good. Life is messy and it's nuanced and what might be a good decision today might not be a good decision 10 years from now or vice versa. So let's first acknowledge the fact that we're never gonna be perfect at this. However, we also don't need to make it such a painful process every single time. I'm gonna start out with the first ping that I got recently listening to an interview that Rich Roll did with Dr. Ellen Langer, who is a brilliant doctor, researcher, author. I think she's a teacher at Harvard. Like she's smarty, smart, smart, but she's also very wise. And she said something in this interview that just clicked for me. So I will link to that interview below along with her book that she just released called The Mindful Body. I think it's a great read for anyone who gets really caught up in black and white thinking or perfectionistic thinking. And I know the majority of my audience does because we have big ambitious brains that we tend to question quite a lot. So here's the one liner she said in this interview that I thought was so profound. Rather than waste your time, being stressed over making the right decision, make the decision right. If we know that there's no such thing in life as the right decision or the wrong decision, and that everything in life is nuanced, why would we then spend so much time, anguish, and energy painstakingly trying to make the right decision when a right decision doesn't exist? Obviously, there are decisions that we make in life that might seem relatively simple and pretty cut and dry. Those are not the decisions I'm talking about. I'm talking about the decisions I'm hearing from clients or people who just write in or place comments, talking about big life decisions where they don't know where to turn because they don't trust themselves to make the right decision for their life. They look at all of the decisions they've made in their life that hasn't gone well, and they make the story about themselves that they can't make the right choices or they can't be trusted to, so they defer to experts or their parents or their friends or any stranger on the internet who might be able to give them some direction on their own life. And the problem with that is nobody on this planet is better equipped to make decisions for us 
than ourselves because nobody has the view of our lived experience and what has colored it, our trauma, our wins, the things we love, the things we hate. Nobody has that full picture but ourselves. And yet for some reason, we feel more comfortable deferring our decisions to somebody else who may know us well, want what's best for us, but they're looking through the lens of their own life and their own agenda because they're not inside your body living your life. So if we can all agree on that one fundamental idea that the best person to make decisions for us is ourselves, then the question becomes, well, how do I put myself in a position where I'm not stressing on making the right decision, but making the decision right? And that comes down to one simple idea that is absolutely going to make you roll your eyes, but I don't want you to click away because I really want you to hear this. The best way for us to ensure that we're making sound decisions is to slow down and make decisions with intention. Now, I know what you're thinking. That would be great, Karen, if I could actually slow my brain down for a hot minute to even pay attention to the things that I'm deciding. And I'm with you on that. I struggle with this as well. Like Sometimes I have big life decisions like where to live that I spend a lot of time thinking about and getting nowhere. And then there's other decisions I make like whether or not to buy a sweater that I don't really like and doesn't really fit that great, but it's on sale and my friend that I'm shopping with really likes it and thinks it looks cute on me. So I'm really not buying it for me. I'm buying it because she approves of it and I'm not giving myself a minute to ponder whether or not I actually like the sweater enough to buy it. So there is definitely various scenarios where this comes into play. And unfortunately, I don't have the perfect answer on how you can slow down your own brain. But I do have a few tools and suggestions that are helping me that might be helpful for you as well as you navigate better, more peaceful decision making in the future. So let's start with the big decisions. Like, should I marry this guy or not? Should I leave my husband or stay with him? Should I have kids or not? Should I go to school or start a business? Those big decisions that you don't typically make on a whim, I mean, let's be honest, sometimes we do, but we don't necessarily get anywhere with them, right? Like the more you overthink it, the more you overthink it. What I have found to be helpful is number one, to pause and ask myself, what is most important in the season of life and what am I optimizing for? Whenever you ask yourself those two questions, it immediately starts to tighten that filter from how you're making a decision. So when you are making big decisions and you feel like you're just overthinking it and you're not making any progress, ask yourself those two questions. And if that doesn't help you enough, then check in to make sure that you are making decisions based on the person that you are today. You're not making decisions based on that 22-year-old party animal who used to make terrible decisions. Not naming any names, but that may or may not have been me. Now, the other tool is something I've known about for a long time, but I reheard it just today. So it's fresh on my mind and it really is sinking home for me. And it's that definition of alignment. Alignment is when your head or your mind or your ego, whatever you want to call it, isn't arguing with your heart or your inner voice or your intuition or whatever you want to call that. Whatever's happening here is coherent with whatever is happening here. That means that I'm clear I either want to do a thing or I don't want to do a thing, but there's no back and forth or overthinking. That's what happens when you're in alignment. When you're not in alignment, whatever's happening here in your heart is not aligned to what's happening up here in your head, mind, ego, whatever you want to call it. And there's a lot of head trash, right? Now, if I were a 100% actualized being, which I'm 100% not, I would always make a choice that's in alignment with what's in here. Call that your intuition, your higher self, your inner voice, your heart, whatever you want to call it. I do believe that what comes from in here is always in alignment with my highest good, if you will. But my mind, my ego, whatever you want to call what's up here, has very strong opinions about how I should live my life. Ergo, the overthought cycle that tends to get me absolutely nowhere. So if this resonates and you also find yourself often in this dilemma of heart saying one thing and head saying another, I can't think of a better tool than journaling and just asking yourself questions. Like you can start with the ones I've already mentioned, what's most important and what am I optimizing for? But then you can start digging into questions like, why is it? that my heart wants decision A. What is it about decision A that my higher self thinks is important? And you can continue asking yourself why, why, why 
until you get to a satisfying answer. And then you can turn to your head and say, well, why does my mind or ego want to go with decision B and start digging into that? And you'll probably find that a lot of the answers that are coming from your mind are based in either scarcity or fear or on the flip side of that protection and safety and staying where you are and staying small. And I'm not suggesting that always choosing to stay where you are is a bad choice. Sometimes that's a great choice, especially for those of us who have a tendency to pick up new things all the dude a day. But what you want to be clear on is why. Why is staying the best choice? And if staying is the best choice, why is my heart telling me something different? And if you stay with that line of questioning long enough, then at least you know what you're dealing with. And when you're very clear on why your ego is trying to protect you, like what's the fear behind whatever it is you wanna do, your mind is always going to be giving you blockers to what's in your heart. Imagine trying to drive a car when you've got your foot on the gas and on the brake at the same time. Your ego is the brake and your heart or intuition is the gas. And while I would love to tell you to just take your ego off the brake, that's not easy to do in practice. But what you can do is train your ego to pump the brakes. I can almost guarantee when you try by just taking your foot off the brake a little bit, you're going to prove to yourself that whatever that fear is, is not quite as scary as you thought it would be. And as you do that, as you pump the gas and give yourself more opportunity to just try what's in your heart, you're going to expand your window of tolerance. I've talked about this before, but think about your nervous system in three different layers. When you are overstimulated, stressed out, overwhelmed, your mind is in charge as telling you what to do, that is your state of hyperarousal. It's really hard to make decisions or take mindful risks when you're in that place. Conversely, when your nervous system is hanging out down here in hypoarousal, that's when you're bored or depressed or you just can't get yourself motivated to do anything. And neither one of those two places are very helpful when you need to make decisions or move forward on something. So what you want to do is stay in that a window of tolerance. And for those of us who don't trust ourselves to make great decisions, either because of fear or scarcity or past experience, our window of tolerance gets really small because we don't trust ourselves to try anything new. So if you're willing to just pat the brakes, give yourself little chances to try something new in a safe way or in a way that doesn't freak you out, then you begin to expand that window of tolerance. And the more you're able to expand that window of tolerance, the more you're able to grow and make bigger and brighter choices for your life and take more risks. And even if it fails or doesn't go well at first or it's a little bit of a bumpy ride, it's okay because you don't get over aroused and overwhelmed, nor will you dip into that state of under arousal where you just kind of give up and think that nothing ever works for you. So you'll never try anything again. So I hope this is starting to paint a broader picture for you about decision-making. It's not just about choosing A or B. It also has to do with your nervous system and your capacity to ride the wave of uncertainty or deal with a failure or things that don't work out right away. Try that practice of checking in to see if you're in alignment. Because if you're in alignment, you're probably not overthinking it. It's probably either a hell yes or a hell no. It's generally when we're not in alignment that we need to go through that practice of getting clarity around what is our heart saying and what is our mind saying in opposition to our heart or intuition. And based on that, how can we move forward keeping our foot on the gas but just gently tapping the brake, knowing that we can stop anytime we want, but giving ourselves permission to actually test whether or not our ego is right. And I want to believe that nine times out of 10, our intuition is right. And it's just our ego that is reacting and doing its job of keeping us safe. So that is how I have been working through some big decisions in my life. I have found it super helpful to check in with that state of alignment. And when I'm not aligned and I start asking questions, I usually find that my ego is making decisions based on an outdated filter that is not even my reality anymore. So that's what I've got for you today, guys. I'd love to know if you struggle with decision-making as much as I do. And on that note, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.